Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a Bible share called Seal the Book. So it's called Seal the Book. So I'm going to do, I'm going to have a, a very short Bible share and I'm going to first go to Daniel's 12. So the seal of the book goes into the Bible, right? So it's talking about the Bible and we're just going to go through a few scriptures to give edification into why certain people cannot get the Bible, right? So it's a little bit of an edification on that and it's primarily because the Bible is sealed, right? It has been sealed or they haven't been given the breath to understand it. They're not woken up yet to understand it, right? Right, before I begin, this Bible share is basically purely to give edification to the saints. This is not about anger or, or getting back at anybody. It's, it's, it's purely about telling you what's in the Bible. Now, this is not for everybody. It's only for the saints. It's only for those brothers and sisters that have awoken up. And they just need some edification. And I'm just sharing what I know. Right. I'm just sharing what I know. It's not for everybody. If, if, if you're a hardcore Christian, you love your, your the Christian church, you love your pastor, you love the prosperity doctrine and you love the idea of not doing any laws whatsoever. You won't get it. It's not for you. Right. So so don't listen to it. What you need is the gospel. You need to know the gospel and you need to be taught the gospel properly. But so this is purely edification for the saints of God. So we're reading Daniel's 12 and we're reading from 8 to 10. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these times? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wicked shall understand, but the wise, sorry, shall understand. So let's read, uh, let's read it again. And I heard, but I understood not. So this is Christ speaking, the man in Lenin. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these times? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the end of time. Right. So he said these words are sealed until the end of time, till the end of days. Right. Many shall be purified. Many shall be purified, meaning you, you shall come to holiness and made white. White goes into holiness, purity. And tried, so you shall be tried by the fight, by the, the trials of faith, captivity, slavery, colonialism. But the wicked shall do wickedly, but the wicked shall do wickedly. But none of the wicked shall understand, but none of the wicked shall understand, right? The wicked are those people that are rebellious. They don't really care about truth. They don't care about this Bible. They just want to go around, go around doing wickedness, Right? So they're going to carry they're going to carry on doing wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. But the wise, the, the people who the Lord has opened their eyes, given the breath to and they have awoken their bones now are now living now. They're back to where they should be. The wise shall understand. Right. So let's go to Revelations five, reading from one to five. Revelations 5, reading from 1 to 5. And I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. So this book goes into the Bible. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. So this Bible needed to be opened. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look therein. So they weren't able to dissect the Bible. It's full of, uh, you know, similitudes. It's book is full of uh, uh, confusing sayings because you don't know, you don't have the understanding to understand the complex bits of the Bible. Or the prophecies even. Who is able to open the book, neither to... Neither to look therein. And I wept be much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book. Neither to look therein. Five. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the, the root of David, heart prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So Christ is the 
he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He came from the tribe of Judah. So he is the lion. He's, he is the king, right? And the root of David. So he came from the lineage of David, King David. Heart prevailed to open the book. So he opened the book when he came and he died on the cross. And to loose the seven seals thereof. So, so from that time onwards, those seals were released. From different intervals, they were released, right? So... Let's now go to Revelation 6 and we read it from 1 to 17. Revelation 6 and we shall read from 1 to 17. So we're going to read this fast. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals and I heard, as it were, the noise of, of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Right, the Lamb goes into Christ, right? So Christ opened that book, the Bible. Let's read it again. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Right, so he opened one of the seal, right? So, we, so, so this chapter is talking about the seals. As they're being opened, there's like prophecies that are happening, right? So it's in intervals of seven. The noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him and had a bow and a crown and was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. So this, um, so he saw, behold, a white horse. So the white horse is symbolic of purity and was given unto him. And he that sat on him had a bow, but he had a bow. <laughs> he had a bow and a crown. So he had uh, he was he was given uh, the kingdom, you know, he was given authority over other nations. He had a crown. Right. As was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So he was conquering. Right. So he, he, he looked like a righteous person, but he weren't righteous. This horse wasn't righteous at all. This this horse was just going around conquering things. Right. So let's carry on. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast saying, come and see. And there went out another horse that was that was red. So that conquering goes into conquering the nations. Right. So it's taking lands and peoples and conquering. Right. And there went out another horse that was red. So this horse was red, which is symbolic of Esau. All right. And power was given to him that sat therein to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So so a sword was given unto him. Right. Esau was given the balance of a sword. Right. So if we go to. So if we go to Genesis 27, 38. Genesis 27, 38. And Esau saw unto his father. Hast thou but one blessing, my father. Bless me, even me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shall thou live and thou shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the domination, when thou shalt have the domination or dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Right. So so he's saying. That Esau was given the balance of power. Right. And the fatness of of the earth so he was given that uh he was given that blessing so to speak or curse over the earth to conquer right and when he opened the third seal i heard the third beast saying come and see and i beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So this goes into unfair treatment in terms of trading, trading with nations. So there's an, an there's an imbalance there when it comes to trading in terms of the money system, in terms of the what do you call it when you're making transactions. You know, there is an imbalance there because he holds the balance of power. So he exploits those powers that he has. So it says, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Right. So he's it, it, so again, there's some preservations of oil for edification's sake. Let's precept 
uh, what we're reading, right? Just to bring it alive. So let's go to Leviticus 19 and we're first going to do the weights, right? So we read in Leviticus 19 and we're going to read from 35 to 37. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment in meter yard, in weight or in measure. Just balances, just weights or just epa and just hin shall ye have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe all my statutes and all my judgments and do them. I am the Lord. So the Lord was instructed, Israel, you must be just with your people, right? You've got to be righteous with your people. So in Revelations, it's talking about, um, so you've got the na the, you've got the countries or the peoples that are in power exploiting the poorer countries, right? So the black horse signifies dark or black countries, right? So those that are not in rulership. So the dark and the black countries, right? So let's now go to Psalms 104. So we're reading Psalms 104 and we're going to read from 14 to 15. So we're going to precept oil and wine. He calls it the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that make it glad the heart of man and oil to make his face shine and bread which strengthen which strengthens man's heart so it, so that goes into the oil and wine literally means oil and wine in revelations it's not a substitute for something else right but in a, in a broader sense of the term it means whatever that country or nation is producing Right. Whatever that a nation or country is producing their resources, whatever they produce in that country that they are selling. Right. So it's going into preserving it, because if you're if there's a system whereby the powerful nations or the powerful nation is exploiting the poorer nations, then there's an imbalance. So there's a sense of uh, losing the resources. Right. Basically, it's a form of theft. <laughs> right. Just to narrow it down. Right. <laughs> right. And when he had opened the fourth beast, the fourth seal, rather, I heard the voice of the fourth beast saying, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse and his name that was sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with a sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw. Right. So the fourth seal goes into a pale horse, meaning death. Right. So. And I looked and behold, a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death. So what sat on him was death, right? And hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. So they conquered the earth and they had power over a lot of the earth, right? Right. A lot of the earth. One particular, particular side of the earth. They had power. North America, right? America's. Uh, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with a sword and with conquer and will conquer and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So, so when you go to the western part of the world, right, that part of the world, the Americas, right? And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar. So all the riders of these horses are Esau, right? He, he's riding all of these in these seals, right? Nine. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Right. So he saw those that were killed and they wanted their, their blood to be avenged. Right. They were they were given unrighteous treatment, injustice in the system. Right. Police killing you on the street for no reason, giving injustices and being murdered for no reason. Right. Slavery, colonialism, all of those things. Also, uh, people, prophets that were killed, people that were, were killed for the word of God. They were killed for spreading the word of God. People that were oppressed, they were murdered. Like what Paul had to go through, all the pretty much all the prophets had to go through. So they were sitting there waiting to be avenged. And white robes were given unto every one of them. So they, they, their salvation was sealed. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also 
uh, until for a little season until their fellow servants also their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled so those were followers of christ i should should have said that they're followers of christ they're not just any tom dick and harry they're followers of christ and behold when he had opened the sixth seal that's israel israelites by the way <laughs> no all nations just israel and behold when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth and hair and the moon became with blood and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth even as a fig tree cast at her untimely figs when she was shaken of the mighty wind right so that goes into the satellites falling from space right and the heaven departed as a scroll and when it rolled together and every mountain and island were pushed out of their places that's the nuclear bombs when they hit it creates a mushroom cloud right because it's destroying everything in its sight 15 and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains so people are hiding themselves those rich people people are hiding people, you know all sorts of people are hiding from the destruction and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb hide us from christ right because they know christ uh, return is imminent 17 for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand right so nobody can withstand so that's roughly in all of these seals right what's going on so currently we're in kind of the fifth going into sixth right probably in the sixth actually but fifth going into sixth seal right so let's know go to revelation 7 and we're going to read from 1 to 4 and after these things i saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth so these angels are holding back destruction from the earth world war three they're holding it back holding the four winds of of the earth so the four winds goes into armies they're holding back war from happening that the wind should not blow on the earth nor the sea nor the tree and i saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God. And he cried in a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So those angels are stopping destruction. They're stopping from that spirit being imparted into man to cause the destruction of World War Three. So those, that's, the, that's the work of those angels. So let's read two again. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying her, these are literally angels right holding these holding back destruction right saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our god in their foreheads so israel needs to be sealed in their foreheads before that has to happen and i heard the number of them which were sealed and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of israel so it, it, so the lord is waiting for 144000 israelites to be sealed and when that happens destruction will happen and then the end of the world comes and then that's it right so that's what uh, that's what the world is waiting for right so let's go revelations 8 and we're going to read from 1 to 13 right so this this is when these seals have been unleashed right these are the different intervals within the sea within the seals right roughly what's going on within the seals right so let's read revelations 8 and we're going to read from 1 to 13 and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar and given a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. So it goes into saints. The saints have been sealed. And the smoke of the incense which came from the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of, out of the angels' hands. And the angels took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Let's carry on. The first angel sounded and they followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees were burnt up and all the green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded and as it were, great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea had life died 
and the third part of the ships were destroyed and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of water so this goes into missiles right so it goes into you know even the creatures in the sea are dying because of these missiles because of this destruction right Uh, and the seas, you know, those warships, etc., are being destroyed by these missiles. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. So let's read 10 again. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. Right. So that is a missile. And the name of the star was called Wormwood. So it's so it's naming it Wormwood. That's the missile. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Why? Because they died. Right. They died. <laughs> right. They they they. It killed them or halfway killed them and then eventually they died. And the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of moon and the third part of the stars as the third part of them were darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, whoa, whoa, whoa. So it says World War One, World War Two, World War Three. So that's three woes, right? It just means destruction. To the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So, so it is World War Three. So that goes into World War Three, right? <laughs> so it's saying that is World War Three. That's literally the end, right? So, so the angel is saying, whoa, whoa, whoa! First destruction, second destruction, third destruction. To the inhabitants of the earth by reason of other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Right. So I suppose, you know, it's 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 probably not time yet for it to be finished, finished, finished. It's still got, you know, some way to go to be completed. You know, completion is when Israel goes back in in, in its land. And everything is cushy again, right? Right? Everything is great again. It goes back to the way how the Lord wants it to be, right? So let's now go to where are we going now? We're gonna to go to Revelations 22. And we're gonna Revelations 22, 10. Uh, and he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand, right? So he's saying, So this, so the book was unsealed via Christ, right? Now, as we know. A bulk of the, of the sealing of this book was released in the late 60s, right? In the late 60s, you know, around 1969, that's when a lot of it has, was, was unsealed, right? That was a, a crucial uh, decade when the holy book was revealed, right? When a lot was revealed because a lot of prophecies had already come to pass, you see? So, and he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, but the time is at hand. So it's now unsealed. So let's carry on to 12. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be ho holy still. And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Right? Okay, so let's park up at Revelations 22 and we're reading from 10 to 12. So we're going to park up here for a bit. And he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. So the, the book, the Bible now is unsealed. Now, in Daniel's time, it was sealed. Even Daniel couldn't understand some of the things that he was seeing. And, the, and Christ said to Daniel, it's sealed. But now Christ is saying to John, the revelator, He's saying, seal not the prophet, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. So the Bible now is unsealed. Obviously, time has passed, right? The prophet prophecies have come to pass. Plus, more importantly, in the during Daniel's time, it said he said knowledge shall increase. Knowledge has increased because obviously now we have radios, we have television, we have so many channels and television, we have the Internet. We have public libraries, we have planes, right? We have all sorts of means of getting information, technology from people to people very quickly. The, obviously, the Internet is very important. You know, that's like the that's like the ultimate, you know, form of technology. 
right? Because it's quick, it's fast, right? So technology has increased. So therefore, the Bible now, with the prophecies now, have now been revealed. So, 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 so Christ is saying to John, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Because this is going into regeneration, right? If you don't know what regeneration is, I've, I've got, I think, about three or four videos on regeneration. Is when you come and go, right? Because this is not your first time here on earth. You were here before, right? But that's a separate video, right? So that's going into regeneration. It's the same spirits coming and going, doing the same things. If you were filthy... Back in the, back the last time you were here, you come back being filthy. If you're righteous, the last time you were here, you come back being righteous. If you were, if you were holy, the last time you were here, you come back being holy. If you are unjust, the last time you were here, you come back being unjust. It's the same spirit coming and going, doing the same thing. So 12, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. So Christ is coming back. To give every man according to his work, right? So he's going to judge all of us and he's going to give us compensation to the work that we have done, right? The things that we've done it within our flesh. That's really what he's talking about, right? The things that we have done within our flesh, right? So let's read that bit again. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. So Christ is coming back to reward the saints, the true saints of God, the people that love him, really love him. The saints are the Israelites, but I'm talking about the real people that love him. To give every man according as his work shall be. He's going to give every man according to the, the things that he's done within his flesh. So judgment shall come when Christ returns, right? Now, just to go back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video, um, if you're a hardcore Christian, you won't get this seal the book. What I've been saying here, you won't get it. You know, it just go in one ear, come out the other. You'll go, regeneration? I don't know what regeneration is. Oh, it's regeneration. That's a false doctrine. That's a false doctrine. And because you spent 20 years in the Christian church, you've never heard it, right? Because you've never been taught it because your pastor didn't know it, right? Why didn't he know it? That's what you've got to ask yourself, right? Why do you have to hear it from somebody else that you're not paying online, but every Sunday or every Saturday, you're praying, you're paying your Christian church. You're praying your Christian pastor and the Christian church. You're paying your pastor tithe money and all sorts of other money. And he's not telling you the things that you should know because he doesn't know them. Right. He doesn't know them and he doesn't really believe in the Bible. Right. How do you know if you really believe in the Bible? If you've been a Christian for more than a year. Two years, three years, four years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, dare I say it, 30 years. You've been a Christian for 30 years and you're still smoking. You do, or you're doing any of these things, right? Whether it be smoking, eating pork, eating seafood, which is crab, lobster, you're eating prawns and all sorts of other filth like shellfish and octopus and all sorts of filth, right? You're smoking cigarettes, you're vaping. You're going to nightclubs. You are, if you're a woman, you're dressing provocatively like a whore, right? You're wearing trousers, you know. If you're a man, you're, you're, you're very female friendly. <laughs> you're not doing what the Lord asks you to do, which is to lead. You're not showing leadership. You're not allowing your masculinity to take control. You just want to bend for a female, the 50-50. If you go to a church with a female pastor, you're not going to get these things. You're OK with female pastors and you're OK with tithing money and all, all the rest of the, the, the stupidity that they say in the Christian church. You're not going to get all of these things. These things are not for you. You're not going to get it. <laughs> you see, you have to love the Lord. 
love the Lord and obey his laws and honor him by doing his laws. Now, when you do his laws, when you honor him with the simple, basic things that he says not to do, now he can open his Bible and teach you. Now he can he can take away the blinkers. He can take you out of the darkness now and he can give you the light so you can now see. So now you can see. So when a brother like me comes on and says these things about seal the book or about something else, then you now can see it for what it is. Right now, I'm going to end it here. Brothers and sisters, I hope you're edified. Shalom.